Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, and let's talk horror. Now, today I am joined by an amazing woman that has had an enormous impact on my life, probably more than she understands, the beautiful and absolutely talented Lisa Wilcox. Lisa, how are you doing today? I'm doing excellent. How about yourself? I am doing very well. Um, Good. This is super awesome for me. Uh, for those of you that have been Patrick Starr and Living Under a Rock, uh, Lisa has been a part of such titles as Nightmare on Elm Street 4, The Dream Master, and 5, The Dream Child, as well as Star Trek The Next Generation, Dead Country, and so much more. But also coming up, two things she's going to be a part of that I'm very, very excited about. Um, we have Seasons and The House That Eats Flesh. So non-spoiler, obviously, what can you tell us a little bit about Seasons that we could be looking forward to? Um, seasons is basically an anthology. And so it's like a horror story for each season of the year. Four seasons, mm -hmm. right? Um, and um, mine takes place during Christmas time. And it was so much fun. There's amazing effects and stories. And um, Benjamin Swicker, who wrote it and direct, is the director, he reached out to me a couple years ago and I was supposed to do a film with him. I love his writing. I just love his writing. Uh, but I don't know, financing fell through or something like that. So, so this opportunity came up and uh, we were supposed to do it last year, of course, but we won't talk about last year. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> So anyway, but I, I read the role, Callie, and just, you know, loved it. And the whole, the whole anthology is just so much fun. And uh, wonderful director of photography. I mean, we filmed on location in the mountains, um, which was great. I had this fabulous little cottage. It was so quaint. And uh, yeah, so anyway, it's, um, I'm excited about it. It's, it's something I'm very excited about, too. Something I was, when the Indiegogo was around, I was so happy to help out as much as I possibly could because not only did it have you and Felissa, but it has so many other big names and amazing actors and actresses that I'm huge fans of. So this is something in the next year that I am over the moon excited about. Um, well, and, thank you for your contribution and for all of you who contributed. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's well, it'll be well worth it, I promise. <laughs> yeah. See, and I've said this often, and anybody that watches this podcast knows A Nightmare on Elm Street is one of my darlings, and A Nightmare on Elm Street for the Dream Master is my favorite in the whole franchise. Um, it's the one I grew up watching the most. It's the one that I've always gravitated to the most. I love everything about that movie, and you are a big part of that. So growing up, you were my Princess Leia. You and Lar Park Lincoln were my crushes, you know, growing up. And being able to have this conversation with you is so important to me. And it means so much to me to learn where horror started for you, Lisa, because this is something that you helped start it for me. You're one of the people that really made me enjoy and love watching horror with A Nightmare on Elm Street 4. And we know what you're doing in the future with Seasons in the House That Eats Flesh. But Lisa, I do want to take it back to the past. And I want to talk about what got you started in the horror genre. And your first horror movie was? The first horror movie I ever watched? Mm hmm Okay. I, I, it, would, um, it was definitely a black and white something or another. Because on Saturdays, my sister and I, when we were little, we would be down in the basement. We'd be watching um, the basement, meaning a nice basement. Okay. It was our playroom. Okay. <laughs> it's not, anyway, I just want to clarify that. Uh, right. And uh, we watch our cartoons in our, in our pajamas and then after cartoons and then the monkeys would be next. And then all afternoon, it would be these old black and white films. Many of them were horror. So mm -hmm. I'm sure it could have been Frankenstein or a Dracula, or I still remember this one I watched. It might've been from a Twilight Zone where like the TV screen becomes this fuzzy electrical monster and he comes out of the TV screen, totally freaked me out. I still cannot locate this particular episode, but anyway, that, that was the beginning. And I was absolutely fascinated with just the good old black and whites, you know? Right. Um, later on, I would say the first horror film I saw in the theater would probably be Carrie. And what a I, collection I, of films. It, I just love that movie. Love it, love it, love it. Because I myself personally can totally relate to Carrie's um, character because I was completely bullied in grade school and junior high. And it's a, you know, a frightful, horrible, horrible thing. So when she gets her revenge, I'm just like, yeah, you know, so. 
anyway. If you find out the people that bullied you, get me their address. I uh, <laughs> I just want to talk to them. I just want to talk I, to them. That's it. Yeah, I I I, I know, <laughs> and and I really hope they got to see all my TV work and my films and stuff, and go, and I can just say, eat me. <laughs> yeah, no joke, man. Because that's something that um. I have three kids of my own and my daughter, my middle daughter, she's eight and she's um, high functioning autism. And I have a nephew that's fully autistic. And um, I've never understood making somebody else feel bad to make yourself feel better. So I'm sorry that obviously we've all gone through it and anybody out there going through it, find someone that you can talk to. I know it always seems like it's super dark, but it's always darkest before the dawn, as cliche as that sounds. There's always people here that you can talk to that love you and care about you. We don't need a real life carry situation happening. So right, um, right, right, right. Yes, there there are always, and we all have, I'm sure, experiences in school growing up. I mean, it's it's rough out there, you know. Um, you know, and it's interesting with Alice, she she's very shy, daydreamer and meek, you know, and she's being bullied by Freddy Krueger. <laughs> right. The ultimate school bully. Right, right, right. <laughs> so hmm. with Carrie, what would you say? Because this is a movie that is very influential in the genre, not just because of the movie itself, but Sissy herself was amazing in this movie and all the things that she went through in this movie. Which scene would you say it was that affected you the most when you watched Carrie? I think when she is in the locker room and she's menstruating and she thinks that she's she's bleeding to death. And they're throwing tampons and, you know, all this at her. And I just, I just find that so cruel. So this yeah. innocent, naive girl, and they just capitalized on it. I mean, it was so, 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 um, you know, that, that scene definitely stands out to, to me, you know? And it's, it's one of those things where this movie, I can talk about the same way that I talk about The Exorcist. Um, watching this movie as a young boy, as compared to watching as a father of little girls, you have two mm. completely different experiences when you watch these films. Um, as a little boy, you know, it's like, oh man, that sucks. You know, I feel bad for her. I've gone through that. And now as a father, it's like, I would be burning that school down if my daughter was going <laughs> through some of these things that this poor young lady went through. And that's what I love about film and especially horror. And the horror community for as disgusting and cruel and vile as these movies can be, the horror community is the most loving and grounded and sweet community that there is. And everybody is so kind and nice. And it's like a family. Once you become part of that horror community, it really is like a family. And you have all these people that look out for you and you can discuss these things and learn more about each other through film and the different experiences you have even 10 years apart from watching. So I'm glad you brought that up because that's a, a scene that I think really scarred a lot of people growing up watching her and the way that she's crying because not only is she scared for what's happening to her with the girls but what's happening to her own body that she doesn't yes. understand and yes. for her mother to tell her this is an evil thing that's happening to you and it's a natural yes. thing that happens in a young lady's life is such a heartbreaking thing to think about because you know that there are people that go through that out there so yes Stephen yes, King knew what he was doing on this one yeah, no, definitely. Um, you know, it's like that Carrie brings up the horror of life, you know, it's yes. a horror film because the horror of life, you know, that can happen to some of us, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, and I think a lot of horror films, um, represent things like that real yeah. life experiences, you know, even Ale like Alice's character. I mean, look at the mm -hmm. character arc she goes through, you know, to finally find her strength. Of course, she's, she is absorbing the powers of her friends, but, you know, it takes a village, right? So right. Alice has a village of, 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 of strength, you know, from her friends to finally beat the bully, you know? Right. And so. with Alice, it, it's both to me like a literal and metaphorical taking on her friends. And like I said, not only the arc in Dream Master, but all the way through Dream Child. I mean, she goes through Dan's death at the beginning of Dream Child and still everything that's happening inside, you know, do babies dream? You know, like the arc that she has in those two films alone, wow. You know, yeah. like the, all the things that she goes through, all the loss and all the heartbreak and all the sadness. And then you, the beauty of having a child to get taken away from you almost, mm -hmm. you know, with mm -hmm. that. So almost, the yeah. And then dealing with teen pregnancy, you know, um, no father, father's died, um, his parents wanting to adopt her child. I mean, yeah. um, will, will my father accept 
that I'm pregnant and accept th this baby boy that I'm going to have. And he does, you know, but it's this whole kind of real life experience that young women go through, you mm -hmm. know, and then so, you add a dream killer to it. Yeah. And then add a dream <laughs> killer to it. Exactly. <laughs> and it's funny. Yeah. Another thing about Carrie that I think often gets overlooked is you look at Carrie as the villain of the story and essentially towards the end of the film in the third act. But you could also argue that she isn't the villain. Like, yes, what she's doing is wrong in a sense, but the movie sets it up to a point to where who's to say we wouldn't do the same thing to these people that it beat you down so much that you have nowhere. There's no more down to go. You know, like that's how low she's been beaten. And for her to finally come out and do these things is just, yeah. you root for her. Like you said. When you do. Like, and I don't condone Damn. violence. I don't condone violence in the sense that, oh, what do what Carrie did kind of thing, you know. And right. But but yes, I was rooting for her because it was a, it's a film. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's our fantasy land. In our fantasy, I would want to do exactly what she did to those <laughs> girls. Okay. That's, that's, that's how we film. can live by <laughs> That's exactly. We can live vicariously through the film. Like that's, that's what I wish could happen in my life. Not killing all these people, but just make them stop. You know, you don't have to yeah. like me, but just yeah. fucking yeah. stop. That's it. Yeah. And you know what? We can fantasize about hurting someone. I, you know, what, I mean, don't do it, but right. we're, we are, you know, like you pointed out, Carrie was as low as you could get, man. Mm -hmm. And um, so anyway, yes, we root for Carrie. And in Even the more than that, I've always said, I grew up in a video store. My parents owned a video store. And so that's why I think I'm so attached to film. And I always gravitated to the horror section. And I always felt like the younger you started watching horror, as long as there was education to go along with it, I felt like you were more grounded in reality because you understood the difference between fantasy and reality, between fact and fiction. You knew that this wasn't real. Like I said, just like everything else in life, there has to be education to go along with it. You don't just put on a horror film and be like, oh, cool, that's fake. I, I understand that now. As long as you have parents and peers that are willing to educate you along with it, I feel like horror really does help to ground you more in reality. I think that's an excellent point. I, I really do. I, I, I do. Um, and it's interesting too, kind of going back to, to the community of horror. Um, it's mm -hmm. true. We are a family. I mean, I have like, there's a, some conventions that I've done for years now and I've seen, you know, and they have the same volunteers. I know them. I know their kids. I've seen their kids grow up to now where they're in college and, you know, we're so proud. I'm so proud of them. And how's, you know, Spicky and, you know, this and that. And it's a great thing. And it's kind of interesting. My theatrical agent in LA, she said when she gets, you know, I get approached with a project and then I call my call Kate and uh, Kate has said to me that she is, she said, the, the writers produce all, all the horror community that work on, they're the nicest producers, the nicest director, the nicest people of all time, she said, which seems like, you know, a, such a contrast, but yes. it's like, it's like what we're saying. The horror community is awesome. <laughs> yeah. And because we I, have I empathy think like you said, for that's each how other. We, we get that stuff out through the writing, through the fantasy, through the film. So that's why I think they're more kind and easier to approach because we just kill people on paper. We don't got to be an <laughs> asshole to people. <laughs> yeah. Right. So when you think about Carrie, Lisa, what would you say the first thing that pops into your head would be? The first thing that what? That pops into your head. Like, say you and I were out drinking at a bar and someone was like, hey, that movie Carrie, that's pretty cool. What do you think about that? What would you say the first thing would pop out of your mouth would be? Yeah, I just think it's a, uh, I don't know, just, well, again, that scene is always what pops in my head first. And of course, the scene when the pig blood is, is mm -hmm. she's drowned in the pig blood in that beautiful dress and, and, and how she's just so attacked and how mean girls are. Yeah. They're just so mean. Um, so, so to me, yeah, Carrie's a hero, absolutely. Yeah. And it's funny because this film, I think is another reason it's so special to me. My first horror movie was House from 1986. That was the first one I watched starring mm -hmm. William Cat. And William Cat obviously also plays the guy who the pale drops on the prom king along with Carrie. So watching this movie later on, I was like, hey, that's Roger Cobb. This must have been where he went to high school at. <laughs> <laughs> like going from here to house. All right, good yeah, job, Roger. Yeah. But so the the length to the the lengths that that teens children will go to to terrorize someone is just so upsetting to me. And especially now with social media. 
and uh, Facebook and, you know, rumors that can spread like wildfire. Yeah. Uh, oh my gosh. It's just, it, I just abhor bullying. It's just to me, just the most, just one of the absolute worst things in, that exist as far as human beings, evilness, you know, it's, it's scarier than any horror movie out there. And the reason Definitely. why is like when you and I were young and you got bullied at school you went home, you hung out with the friends you did have at home and your brothers and your sisters, and it was done. Nowadays, you go home and you're getting it through your Facebook, your Snapchat, your Instagram, your Twitter, your Xbox Live. Like a, you're like a dartboard. Right. Boom, and it boom, never, boom. ever stops. And these kids feel like there's no escape from it. And I think that's why teen suicide is what it is. If you are experiencing mm-hmm. any problems like that, please contact someone. Again, I want to make sure everybody knows there's always someone out there that you can talk to yes. if you're going through something like that. My, all yes. my social media is down here. So is Lisa's. Make sure you're following her on social media. My DMs are always open. If you're ever going through something like that, please hit me up. I would rather talk to you than have something else happen. So, And there's and, wonderful and, professionals out there. There's 800 numbers now. There's, yes. there's like, you know, no, you suicide thought, just call somebody, you know, yes. and, and, and you don't even have to give them your name. You know what I mean? You just, you, you have to talk, but it's, it is quite prevalent. Um, I'm a big supporter of NAMI. National Alliance for Mental Illness, um, and uh, it's an amazing organization. And they have finally, finally, mental health has become part of our uh, news. Finally, you know, cool. it's like okay, someone has diabetes. Well, someone has schizophrenia. Okay, it's still a physical ailment. It you know, and in and, and just so much misinterpretation of people who are bipolar or schizophrenic or suicidal or or um, any of those things, it's like, it's becoming finally not so taboo. And right. it's, it's now about opening our arms to help such individuals, you know? So is, is there a way that we can donate to this program? Yeah, just go to NAMI.com. They have different branches. I, I donate to the one in Los Angeles, um, okay. but they do have branches all over the United States and they are, have been growing and growing, particularly in the past couple of years. Also, because of so many of these random shootings and the kid was, you know, had a mental illness that was never diagnosed. Mm -hmm. And there are medications and there is therapy that can be can be done. My eldest son uh, was diagnosed with schizophrenia when he was um, 17. And I'll tell you, it was the most horrible two years um, because they don't want to be on medication. And it's really, really complicated. Um, I took a whole course that is free, free at NAMI. Okay. It was like a six week course and they give you a whole binder, tons of information, speakers and everything that, um, it was incredibly helpful to, for me and my family to get through this with my, my eldest son. So anyway, there's help out there. And I was just going to say, guys, you don't have to remember the website because I also have that down here in the description. So if you'd like to check that out and donate to a branch that's close to you, Make sure you're clicking this link. It down might here be NAMI, NAMI.org. I don't remember, but you can Google NAMI and it's all mm-hmm. over. And you guys don't have to because it's right here. So make <laughs> sure you <laughs> click <laughs> this link. Help out a little bit. Like I said, mental health, there's nothing more important than your mental health. If you don't have it, you don't have anything. So, and I'm so glad that your son made it through this. Um, I know yes. that it can be an overwhelming time for not just him, but when he's suffering, so are you as a parent. So yes. I'm glad that everything came out the yes. other side on that. And it, it, the biggest part is being um, compliant on medication. And that is the big, big struggle. Um, but he is completely compliant on medication now. In fact, he, um, he just had his first baby. <laughs> Congratulations. <I'm grandma. laughs> Man, that's that's awesome. Congratulations. I bet you are the coolest damn grandma that there is out there. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I just got a couple more questions for you. Um, we, we talked about the unfortunate prom scene with Carrie. Um, we also talked about the locker room scene, and those are both pretty dark scenes. But what would you say your favorite scene from Carrie is? Oh, gosh. I have to rewatch the movie. I'm sorry. Um... <laughs> Um, you know, I, well, it's, the dark scenes are the ones that find me most intrigued, you know, when she calls right. her breasts dirty pillows. I mean, that's such a famous, <laughs> famous scene, you know, but, but also just her, her, just her beauty and her innocence. And wow. I, oh my gosh, you just, I just want to, I just want to give her a big hug, you know? Um, so, the and, and when Sissy Spacek played the role was just absolutely sensational she's such a marvelous marvelous actress she was perfect yeah, casting 
Perfect. hug her and rub her hair and just let yeah, her know so everything is going to be hair. okay. Know. Yes. And a lot of people forget because of how we have, we do have so many jump scares now, but how that ending was with the hand coming through the ground, ground like yeah. that very last, like, Oh, damn. Oh my God. You know? Yeah. That was startling. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, definitely absolutely. startling. So yeah, it, we it, talked it, about it. your first horror movie, Lisa, uh, how that was Carrie. And we talked about some of the projects you got coming up. But before I let you go, I got two more questions for you. And first, I want to go scream on you here for a second. What's your favorite scary movie? What is your favorite horror movie of all time? Um, I hey, I, I probably interesting of Rosemary's Baby. Ooh, okay. Yeah, the demonic thing and the way it was shot mm-hmm. and the creepy characters. And she thinks she's going crazy but not and you know i don't know it that i just i don't know that movie just intrigues me ever so much but i am also just you know i've been a horror fan since i was little and um i've always been fascinated by it and and actually when i was pregnant i watched rosemary's baby oh wow because i wanted the scare right that's so like, i'm that's like know, watching I'm, la Bamba while you're flying across country what? Hey? I said that's like watching La Bamba while you're flying yeah, across exactly, country. Exactly. <laughs> I know it sounds weird. Well, I maybe I am weird. I don't care. Anyway, oh, you're so. perfect. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, well, Lisa, this has been so much fun for me, and like I said, you are such an inspiration for me on and off film, and especially talking about all the Nami stuff and the suicide prevention stuff. I'm glad to hear what a kind person you are, not just an amazing actress. Before we end these, I always end with the same question. We're going to go back to Carrie. And we're going to rank this on a skull count. Zero skulls being the worst and five being the best. We're not being critics. We're not judging it on acting, production, cinematography, or score. We're strictly judging this on what this film means to you and how much it affected you. So zero to five skulls, zero being the worst, five being the best. And you can use half and quarter skulls. (laughs) Your ranking would be... Five. Five. No, it's... uh... Yeah, it uh, had huge impact on me, and I yeah, so it's so, such a great film. Um, yeah. So anyway, and um, oh, and I wanted to say too, uh, House of Eats Flesh. Yeah. The House of Eats Flesh. Anyway, it's filming in September. Cannot wait. Mm-hmm. And getting to my age now, getting older, I'm getting offered these really great like older, creepy woman, mean, evil stuff. This is, and I love it. I love it. So you guys have to keep your eyes out open for it. So anyway, sorry if I ruined your ending there, buddy. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. Because I was going to say, I always end with um, all the social media links are down here. So you oh. don't have to just follow me to let everybody know what's going on. Because I always update on my guests that I've had previously. But you can also follow Lisa. And I have the House That Eats Flash down here and the Seasons Instagram all that's down here in the description, guys. So make sure you're following it because I promise you, from what I've heard, I try to keep it as spoiler-free as possible, even between the people that I know here that I'm friends with. Seasons is a blast, and the House of Eats Flesh is going to be dark and scary and back to the 80s thriller slasher style. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. these are all things that you guys are going to want to follow because you're going to want the updates as soon as they give them, not as soon as I do. So Right, right, um, right. And I'm trying to keep my website updated, too, on, like, conventions mm-hmm. where I'm going to be and whatnot. In fact, I got to do another update because um, now I'm going to be at Crypticon. Uh, kind of a last minute thing. And I've never done CryptoCon. I'm super, super excited. Uh, there's a whole sense. slew of conventions that are, that I mean, they're just pouring in right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, my website, Lisa E. Wilcox, not, there's lisawilcox.com, but that one got like kind of stolen. Anyway, Lisa E. Wilcox.com, um, where you can see, you know, what I'm doing. <laughs> yep. So that's right down here, guys. I promise you're going to want to meet her. And as soon as she does a con around here, I'm going to walk up and shake her hand as well. <laughs> Um, Lisa, don't go anywhere, please. I got a couple more questions for you. Everybody else, as always, I'm Ken Sledge. Keep talking horror. Stay what you are. And we'll see you guys soon. 